Hello friends and welcome to this video. My name is Neutral Patil and today we are going to draw a flowchart for Newton's forward interpolation method. So as per the problem statement we have given x values and y values. The initial value here we have considered as a x1 and initial value of y will be considered as a y1 instead of x0 and y0. So the final value will be xn value and yn value. Now remember here the MATLAB cannot consider the arrays or start the arrays from 0 so we have to consider the values from 1 to n number so that's why the initial value will be x of 1 value and initial value of y will be y of 1 value after giving that value we have to prepare the forward difference table which consists of x values y values and different forward difference operator values of y that is delta y delta square y, delta cube y and so on up to the delta raised to n values. This forward difference table contains rows and columns so we have to define the rows by i variable and column by the j variable. So the i will be defined for rows, the first row will be denoted as 1, then second will be 2 and so on up to nth values and the column will be denoted by j. Again, it will be starting from 1 to n. But if you observe, the j is starting from the second column and not a first column. Because for calculating the yj value, we don't need the x values from x1 to xn. So that's why we have to consider the j number is 1 from the second column, that is from the y column values. Now the same flowchart can be written in terms of i and j as the first value will be x of i value, second value will be x of 2 value. As i is 1 for first, so x of 1, x of 2 and so on up to x of n values. Then y value, here we have to consider i and j. So that's why it will be written as y of i comma j. Here for first row, i is 1 and j is also 1. So we can write y of 1 comma 1. For second row, i is 2, j is still 1. So we have to write y of 2 comma 1 and so on. Same fashion, the next value is the first forward difference. That is the next value minus current value. So that's why here it will be written as y 2 comma 1. So here 2 comma 1 minus this current value 1 comma 1. So in this way it will be prepared and so on up to the nth value. So we require this table to prepare the flowchart and write the MATLAB program. So that's why I am explaining this in detail and now let's draw the flowchart. So start with this start symbol first. Then we have to write the given data that is here n is given and the value of xj is given. So that values we have to take from input from the user by using the input parallelogram symbol. Then we have to take the input of all x values and y values. These values are starting from 1 to n. So that's why we have to use the for loop. i is equal to 1 to n. Then inputting the x values, that is x of i value and y of i comma 1. Now here, only the i variable is representing here. So that's why this value will be x of i value, x of i value this. So when i is 1, x of 1 value. When i is 2, x of 2 value. Now here, we only write in terms of the i and not a j. So that's why i is changing here. If you observe 1, 2, 3. So this i variable is changing here. The j is constant. So it is not written in terms of j. It is directly written as a 1 because 1 is constant throughout all the rows. So that's why here x of i and y of i comma 1. So when <coughs> i is 1, you input the value x1 and y of 1 comma 1. Then again go back to increment in i, i becomes 2, then you have to input the x of 2 values and y of 2 comma 1 values. So this process is repeated up to nth values and then we can go for the next step. So next we have to calculate the value of h which is x of 2 minus x of 1. As here the x of 2 value means this two differences we have to consider. So x of 2 minus x of 1. And u can be calculated as xg minus x of 1 value because here the initial value is x of 1 value and then divided by h value. 
Now next step is we have to prepare the or calculate the forward differences and here for calculating the forward differences first j is going to be changed. So j value starting from 2 because we have to calculate this value of delta y. So this for this value calculation j is starting from 2. So here in this loop j will be considered from 2 to n values. Now again we have to calculate this forward differences. So again here i will be going to change. So i will be written in terms of 1 to n but it will be written in terms of minus j plus 1. So it will be written in terms of j because when we calculating this forward differences we don't get the last value. So it will be n minus j. So when j is equal to 2 and if we consider n as a 5 so 5 minus 2 will be 3 and again plus 1 so 4. So we will get up to the 4 term. Similar fashion in each column there is one less value so that's why it will be written in terms of j that is starting from 1 to n minus j plus 1. And now calculating these values we are starting from this so your i is 1 here and j is 2 and here also we are starting from j2 and i1 so we have to write y of i comma j that is y of 1 comma 2 so that value when we calculate it it will be represented here and it will be again written in terms of i and j that is when i is 1 so here it will be i plus 1 so 1 plus 1 2 so this 2 will be appear here comma j minus 1 so j is 2 minus 1 1 so 2 comma 1 value so this is a 2 comma 1 value minus y of i comma j minus 1 so i is 1 and j is 2 so 2 minus 1 1 so we will get 1 comma 1 value so in this way you will have to calculate this first forward difference value then similar fashion first we need to increment the value of i first because we are calculating vertically so i will be take increment first and then it will be calculate the first column value then the increment in j takes place then we have calculate the next column and so on up to the nth values so after completing this i row and j loop we need to go for the next step here we have to initialize the value of yj is equal to y of 1 and u1 is equal to 1 as you remember the formula in yg the first we have to consider the initial value of y and here the initial of value of y is y of 1 so that's why we have to initialize y of 1 value and this u is nothing but for the calculation of factorial so there is a multiple consecutive multiplications so that's why it will be considered as a initializing way as a 1 this u1 is a new variable the u is different and u1 is a different so from this formula we can see this is first initial value as a y1 so it will be written as y of 1 to initialize and this u1 will be considered for calculating this value so there is a continuous multiplication that is u into u minus 1 u into u minus 1 into u minus 2 and so on that's why it will be considered as the initial value as a 1 value now go to the next step we have to calculate this yg values for this value we only need the first row from this table only this first row is required and which value is starting from y so that's why we have to consider the j value starting from 1 to n minus 1 so that's why here it will be written for loop j is equal to 1 to n minus 1 and then calculating the u value so u is equal to u1 this u1 will be considered into u minus j plus 1 divided by j so we will be get this factorial value so if we consider first j as a 1 then we get here 1 into u <coughs> minus j plus 1 so j value is 1 so 1 plus 1 2 and then divided by 2 so we will get this as a 2 factorial because 2 is nothing but a 2 factorial so same fashion this will be added when j will be takes increment and then we can write the yj formula as yj is equal to yg plus so first yg will be taken as initial value of y1 that is this value <coughs> plus u1 so this will be a u1 value into y of 1 comma j plus 1 that is the into this difference order 
so y of 1 comma j plus 1 means 1 comma j value is 1 so 1 plus 1 2 so 1 comma 2 so we will get this value as a <coughs> 1 comma 2 values and in this way we can get this delta y1 value because this value is nothing but i is 1 and j2 so this value is nothing but the 1 comma 2 value so in same way when the increment in j takes place we can calculate or consider all the difference of that operator and multiply with that value and then next step we have to print the value of yg and then stop this flowchart so this is the detailed flowchart for the Newton's forward interpolation method thank you for watching